Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the Little Shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about why people need to stop expecting the narcissist in their lives to be like everybody else. Dealing with narcissistic people can be not only unpleasant, it can be extremely frustrating. Possibly one of the most frustrating things about dealing with them is that they're often so opposite from other types of people. Most people are basically who they say they are. Most people understand basic concepts. They perceive reality pretty much the same way that you and everybody else does. This is not so with narcissistic people. Their minds just don't work the way other people's minds work. It's not their fault, and it's not your fault. It's just the way things are. Much of the frustration people feel when dealing with narcissists stems from the fact that a lot of the time, people haven't truly accepted what this person is and that they're not like other people. There is a propensity to keep using the same methods to communicate with or deal with the narcissist, and then frustration results because they don't work. And, of course, people keep using the same methods of communication because those methods are what they use with everybody and they work with everybody except this one person. It's like trying to communicate with someone who speaks a totally different language than you do. You can't understand them and they can't understand you. The difference with narcissists is you probably want to understand them, but they generally are not worried about understanding you. One-way communication usually doesn't work. You're listening to them and they're listening to them. The only person who's being heard is the narcissist, and even still, they usually don't feel understood a lot of the time. They're frustrated, you're frustrated, and it's just a very unhappy situation. Another reason for the frustration is that people often don't understand why the narcissist just can't get it. Why don't they understand what the problem is, or what problems they're causing, or what role they have in a situation? Why can't they understand that they're hurting other people? Well, in a lot of cases, that's actually a misunderstanding in itself. The idea that they would stop their behavior if they understood that it's hurtful is a reflection of your own basic humanity, not necessarily the reality of the narcissist. Many of them understand just fine. They don't care. However, it's often very difficult for people to really truly wrap their heads around that, so instead they believe the narcissist doesn't understand. Some people stay stuck in this mentality for a really long time before they realize that's not the case. And that makes sense. It's a very alien mindset in a lot of ways. How can someone just not care like that? But they really don't. The narcissist understands intellectually. It just doesn't matter to them. They understand intellectually that the family can't afford the things that they keep buying, for example, or that flirting openly with somebody hurts their significant other. But this information has no emotional significance for them, and therefore, it's meaningless. Buying things makes them feel good. Attention from others makes them feel good. That is what has meaning. The other things are simply collateral damage. If these things are even acknowledged at all, it's as unrelated things that have nothing to do with them. When dealing with narcissistic people, this mindset needs to be accepted so that time is not wasted trying to explain to this person what they're doing wrong and why it's wrong. In that regard, they'll never get it because the problem isn't that they don't understand. It's that they look at it so differently than you do that they will never see where you're coming from in any way that matters. Repeatedly attempting to try to get through to them is only going to frustrate you more. It can also frustrate them too because many of them will feel like you're nagging them over stupid things that don't matter. Others might feel like you're demonizing their behavior. Either way, trying to force them to care about the impact their actions have on other people is pointless. It's unfortunate that they don't and it's not how most people are, but it's what it is. People cannot be made to feel feelings that they don't have. Narcissists are not like other types of people. They cannot become like other types of people. They are what they are, just like you are what you are. Expecting them to stop being a narcissist would be like expecting a person with two broken legs to get up and walk. They're not able to do what you want them to do. They have to be accepted for who and what they are. That doesn't mean you have to stay in any kind of relationship with them. Acceptance doesn't mean approval, but it does mean that the reality of the situation has to be accepted. This person has a serious problem. They're not just going to snap out of it, unfortunately, and they're not going to change. So when we say that people need to stop expecting narcissists to be like everybody else, what does that mean? It means that narcissists and everybody really needs to be understood and evaluated as they are, not as people think they should be. They don't think like other people think. 
They don't feel, perceive, or reason the way that other people do. They're not going to, no matter how many times anyone tells them, no matter how many times anyone explains things to them. This has to be accepted or the hurt that their loved ones experience at the constant reopening of these wounds every time the narcissist does what narcissists do is never going to be able to heal. Your expectations are probably pretty reasonable and regular. You probably want what most people want, to be respected, to be treated with decency and compassion and fairness. But narcissists are not reasonable. They are not regular. They cannot meet these expectations and they don't care to anyway. They simply want what they want and that's it. That's the most important thing to them, regardless of where on the spectrum they fall. Some are more abusive than others. Some may have more of a conscience or a sense of empathy than others. Some may be less unpleasant than others or whatever. But in the end, what's most important to all of them is what they want. Whatever that thing may be at the time, it's the only thing that matters. Anything that gets in the way of that is a problem for them. Anything that's outside of it just doesn't matter. Part of healing and moving on is understanding that this is the reality of the situation and it's not going to change. When you can adjust your expectations of the narcissistic person and accept that what they are is just what it is, you can eliminate some of the stress and the pain of dealing with them. So much of our distress comes from our expectations of what things should be like. There's an old Buddhist teaching which states that the root of all suffering is desire. Look at narcissists. All they know is desire and want, and they are miserable because of that. That's one of the reasons relationships with narcissistic people are so painful. The desire and the reality are vastly different from each other. That desire keeps people holding on and trying long after they know they should move on. With true acceptance of the situation and the understanding that this person is not like everyone else and never will be, that desire and the expectations that arise from it can be adjusted so that more realistic things can be put in place and suffering can eventually be eliminated. Once people accept the reality of the situation, they can then decide whether this is something they want in their life or not. If they decide it's not, acceptance goes a long way toward helping healing. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you, and have a wonderful day.